Hey, welcome back everyone. Uh, my wife is out here helping me film some video today. <clears throat> I convinced her uh, that I would not hurt her um, with uh, any flaming debris. So uh, I wanted to do a quick video on the synthetic uh, ruby that uh, I've been working on. Um, I've been helping out uh, several people and currently there's a couple of high school kids that uh, uh, taking on a project to make uh, synthetic ruby um, and sapphire, but they're just going to go for ruby since sapphire is a lot more difficult to uh, create the proper color. You're mostly going to get light gray to dark gray unless you have the exact conditions that you need to uh, to work on sapphire. Anyhow, so what I'm going to do here is I've made like a nice little uh, cone out of my ruby mix. Um, this is the batch four. I know it was in one of my other videos. Uh, but this one is like 97% aluminum oxide and 3% chromium 3 oxide. So <clears throat> it looks fairly light, um, but it does come out with a really nice red. I don't know how to look under an oxygen, uh, hydrogen flame, but right now I'm still using the map fuel in oxygen. And so it's just going to have to do until I get uh, more stuff set up for my burn one furnace. So without any further delay, I'm going to go ahead and start this. Now, what I'll do is I'll slowly bring the flame down onto the pile so that I don't just blow the entire pile away. What happens is, as I'm bringing that flame down, I'll have a, 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 a oh, yeah, I'm having trouble thinking of the terms. Um, <laughs> anyhow, I'll be bringing the, the oxidizing flame down onto the pile kind of slowly and what it'll do is it'll kind of center the outer edges of the pile at least to some extent and that prevents the entire pile from blowing away obviously if i'm going to be doing this in the well furnace i'll have a platform inside of a chamber where the powder falls through the uh, nozzle and the hydrogen and the oxygen mix right at the front there so you've got the powder going right through the center of the stream and it melts before it hits the platform and the platform is lowered while the flame stays in just the right spot on the bowl that's forming to continue growing the crystal um, with as little bubbles or uh, inclusions as possible so anyhow like I said I'm gonna go ahead and get started here um, <clears throat> so I, I'm not gonna try to talk through here because uh, it'll be impossible I think to hear me Takes a little bit to get the flame set up just right. Flame that I want. I'm gonna bring this down. What's going on right now is I got the flame at least at the, uh, at the pile in about a, a 2100 degrees Celsius area of the flame. 
uh, it's just through the melting point. I can only see that through the goggles. And of course that happens. Uh, that sucks. Yeah, this pile of lift coming along nice and good. Alright, back at it. And for the sake of experimentation, this pile is at a reasonable point where I've got molten uh, oxide together forming my uh, ruby material. Man, this plane does not want to cooperate with me today. But uh, yeah, I'm wanting to keep a, a <clears throat> the top here right in the spot where it's able to stay uh, in a semi-molten state, and that allows the uh, crystal of the corundum to uh, form an actual lattice, so it's, it's not going to be just clay, it'll actually be crystals that uh, you'll be able to verify through the microscope. And of course my flame's going to go out on me again, so I guess that's my indication that this is the uh, over for the time being. But, uh, yeah, you can see, uh, <clears throat> this thing will glow for quite a while. It'll look black. Um, I'm hoping that I had it in enough of an oxidizing flame that all that black is not carbon. It'll stay black for a while because that's just how it is. When you, uh, <laughs> heat up these oxide materials, uh, the, I know I showed that in another video too where you can heat up the ruby material which I've got some right here from an earlier test um, just because it's been a while I've wanted to do some um, and I've also got a little bit inside here which did not work out too well for me um, the flame was uh, kind of going everywhere um, but we've got some nice little molten spots on here. I was hoping to get more but uh, that's good enough for now. And you can see how you don't see like the powder uh, a solid color of green. It, it looks more white uh, and the reason for that is the amount of time that I spent uh, homogenizing the mixture of uh, the aluminum oxide and the chromium 3 oxide. Uh, some of my mixtures, you know, from the past, like if you do the 95% aluminum oxide and 5% uh, chromium-3 oxide, it's a lot more green. But here you can see it's a little bit of a green color, and it's a little bit more evident that it's got a green hue to it than this here that's been uh, heated up. So, yeah, the reason for that is, you know, because it's the 3%. And the mix is, I spent a lot of time mixing it. Um, if you put it under the microscope, you can't see like little green globs. Like you can sit there and mix it for a while by hand. And if you put it under the microscope or you heat it up, you're going to end up finding really deep, dark red spots. You know, also have like little green blobs where the chromium three oxide, uh, it wasn't mixed up well enough. So it's basically a, a ball of semi-fused uh, chromium-3 oxide and um, yeah anyhow it's got quite a uh, while to go to cool down enough where you can see that red but it should be at bare minimum yeah let me see if I can pull that out without breaking it up too much 
Yeah, and you can see it's actually a little more green. Yeah, and it's because it was under the pile, but as it uh, starts to fuse, you can see how it lightens up. And I've seen that on examples of bulls that weren't complete. They were taken out of a burden well furnace early just to show what the process uh, looks like as the bull starts forming. Um, this one you can see that all the little black dots in it possibly. Uh, that's just carbon contamination and that was because I tried to center the pile a little bit with just the map fuel and a, a TS 8000 uh, torch head. Uh, I don't know where I put it but uh, yeah. So this thing will continue to cool down and we'll see all that black should turn to red unless uh, because of the issues that I had with the torch going out on me uh, it might have uh, a bit of uh, carbon contamination that I wasn't anticipating so nonetheless you can see that it does actually begin to form synthetic ruby and uh, I will do my best to take that under the microscope and see if we can find any uh, crystal lattices but uh, yeah, until then, um, <clears throat> I'm hoping that this video will help uh, the, the kids that uh, are working on this for their project um, and anybody else who wants to attempt this. Uh, obviously, you'll have much better results with uh, oxygen-hydrogen flame because it's a, a lot cleaner. You don't have the hydrocarbons uh, contaminating everything. I don't know if it was visible when I light the, the torch, but there's all kinds of black soot that goes everywhere when you just have the map fuel lit. So that's it for now. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to keep on working on my Brunwell furnace design. Uh, I'm, the chamber is probably going to be about six inches in diameter. Uh, at, I think about 12 inches tall. I was going to do 16. But, uh, yeah, I can't do any of that right now in front of the camera. So I appreciate you guys watching, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.